Hey everyone, so I am um, getting my blood test drawn today. It's the sixth day of the fasting mimicking and I did the Prolon box. Uh, the first time I did it, it was the whole food uh, approach to the same protocol kind of that Dr. Volter Longo put in his book, uh, Fasting Mimicking Diet, Longevity Diet. So the idea would be if you stick with uh, doing a thousand again just basic but check out my video down below a thousand on the first day and then 750 on the second to the fifth days that should get you that response um, to I think it's to start ketosis and then on the sixth to the 31st day depending on the month um, hopefully rebuild or re-stimulate stem cell production so the idea would be if you can get uh, a few blood tests, you got all of them, right? Yeah. A few blood tests to do before and after the fasting mimicking diet, that'd be great if you're one of my patients. I'm a self experimenter, so I wanted to see what my blood tests were before and after the whole food FMD, and now I'm doing it before and after the Prolon. Uh, the only reason I'm lying down now is because the Prolon box kicked my butt, and uh, that makes me think, and I've been posting this on Facebook, so. Uh, check uh, look for me on Facebook if you want to get on the same routine with us a, a bunch of us are doing it Spectacular results by the way, so uh, It makes me think because this one kicked my butt more than the first round. Maybe I have to revamp my um, the whole food approach um, I thought I was calculating it properly, but compared to before I may I, I even worked out during the uh, whole food approach this time I, and that's, again, that's the reason I'm lying down is because I am just beat. And uh, so it, I think that the box is more efficient. Uh, this is my fluids. And by the way, when you're getting your blood test done, ask to be lying down, uh, even if you don't pass out, but uh, also tank up with fluids. You should be fasting 12 hours, as with all cholesterol tests. Um, and it should be in the morning, especially if I'm asking you to get a ketosis level or a beta hydroxybutyrate level or an insulin level. It's best done when you first wake up. Uh, I get up super early but uh, at, at five-ish, but uh, there's no labs open. So as long as I can compare apples to apples, I'll see what my first round of blood tests showed. Um, and, and again, if you want to have patients, try to do the same. If you're doing this from a distance, ask your doctor if he can do fasting beta hydroxybutyrate insulin level because I think even if you're a normal hemoglobin A1C, a, a pre-diabetic, whatever, your insulin levels in the morning will tell you if you're in ketosis or not. Starvation will put you into ketosis. Uh, exercise will put you into ketosis. Um, nutritional ketosis diet, like the keto practitioners, will put you into ketosis. But depending on the level of um, how aggressive you are, will show on the results of the insulin and the beta hydroxybutyrate. So uh, I think that testosterone levels, uh, female, not female, but estrogen, progesterone, um, will also help. Uh, lipids are slow to respond, uh, that's cholesterol. So I don't usually check those. Um, might be also important to get thyroid, which I'm doing. And if you do your thyroids, do uh, thyroid stimulating hormone, uh, reverse uh, T3, free T3, free T4, and if you're, um, uh, uh, say, a Hashimoto patient, thanks. then also get your antibodies. Although antibodies, well, actually, antibodies might change because the 6th to the 31st day is when the stem cells start to kick in. And thanks. You're uh, if, the st if my uh, 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 hypothesis is correct, I haven't had a chance to talk to anybody from the Longo staff, Stem cell boosting should change around immunity. And if you're uh, Hashimoto, that means your antibodies are attacking you. Stem cells should be able to stop the attack. That's just my hypothesis. Last time I did my whole food approach, uh, my T3, T4 stayed okay, but my reverse T3 really skyrocketed. That usually means that your thyroid's still able to produce thyroid hormone, but it's useless, it's T4. Uh, converting over to T3 should be what happens, but when you convert to reverse T3, your body's going into shutdown. Uh, hibernation, think of it that way, which is nice because again, ultimately you wanna pull all the energy 
out of your visceral fat, more so than just ask your body to shoot for it. So uh, I'm going to continue this right after I get my blood test, so here we go. I now have the results from the blood test that I did after my second round of a fasting mimicking diet. Uh, I got my blood test last Saturday. I'm on day 12 if you're counting the whole month. So the FMD, fasting mimicking diet, goes for five days. Uh, the sixth day was Saturday. That's supposed to be the beginning of the refeed process. And it's, I think, and I'll tell you at the end of this presentation that it's very important for the 6th to the 16th day to not binge or to at least try to avoid the urge to binge because during the 6th to the 16th day, as far as I can gather, uh, I've, I've found that when the stem cells start to rejuvenate, I think uh, Longo called it um, longevity extension, uh, the, the cells have to be you don't want to block the effect of stem cells rejuvenating. Um, they'll differentiate, at least as far as I remember from embryology, when we're uh, infants and babies, uh, stem cells are very active. That's why you have to have um, a, a very well-kept environment. It maybe has to be protected. It maybe has to be well-fed, um, avoid disease because, or infection, because during those times you have the blossoming of stem cells going into, uh, it's called pluripotent cells, they go into differentiation, they, they make liver cells, uh, uh, they make muscle cells, they make kidney cells, brain cells, bone cells, so these little things that have a pack, uh, they're packed with uh, messages can differentiate into the end result of different organs, and different organs and different tissues will make the human. So. Uh, the only time that usually happens is when you're a baby, uh, when you're conceived and when you're growing up. But usually it stops after that, unless you have chemotherapy, because the chemotherapy wipes everything out. And then hopefully if you make it past chemotherapy, for those of you with cancer, uh, the, if you're healthy after that, your stem cells will start to reproduce again, turn on and reproduce again. So this is a great thing because you don't need any medicine. In fact, in fact I think that's what Longo decided or came up with is that he wanted to give an option that wasn't medicinal or pharmaceutical. And, and the results of just manipulating your diet uh, it are almost matched to certain medicines. He has ongoing trials now with the benefits or the, um, uh, the, the, the profits from people buying the Prolon box. Uh, that's, I'll put a link down below for Prolon. Uh, he's putting it back into research and the research now is going to be with a fasting mimicking diet compared to a diabetics with metformin, fasting mimicking diet compared to a multiple sclerosis patients on, I don't know which medicines, same thing with Alzheimer's disease. There also is with really, this is what I like, uh, there's also, I think it's finished now, a study out of Verona with athletes. Now that's not anybody sick, that's just athletes and seeing if you can have different tasks or muscle function uh, improve with fasting mimicking diet. So I, I can't wait to see the information. So if those of you who buy the Prolon box, uh, and I uh, have purchased two, I think it's important that you know that this money is going back into research to hopefully give it even more solid recommendations for fasting mimicking diet, not just for cancer or maybe weight loss, but for other medical diseases as an option to prescription medicines. So um, anyway, the so it's important, uh, I, you can see how to do the first, uh, first of the fifth days. And if you do the whole food approach, that's fine because the Prolon box is a little pricey. But if you do the Prolon, uh, which I did in this cycle, I did the whole food approach the first cycle, I did the Prolon box this cycle. Kicked my ass. So the Prolon box is tough. So it makes me think that uh, I might have to recalculate my uh, food calculations or my food uh, that I did for the five days because I hardly made it through the third, fourth, and fifth day. And most of the blogs online have stated that at the third day, you're gonna crash. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna show you my numbers. Uh, either way, I think both did something of a stimulus to me. And I'll tell you, I'll show you at the end. Um, I don't have that many diseases at this point. At least all my diseases uh, are uh, controlled, but uh, my markers of inflammation are, are relatively benign. So you don't really see too many changes, but I tell you, I feel it anyway. So let's go through this. And first thing is, 
uh, usually when you go through the five days, your white blood cell count, the theory is that uh, all cells start to shrink because there's not as much uh, building block or nutrition uh, going into the body, the body starts to, uh, through autophagy or apoptosis, uh, cell death, program cell death. Those cells that were crappy or senescent or those precancer cells that were on the verge of dying, they're going to die. Number one, because they can't adapt to uh, having uh, fat for fuel instead of glucose, which you really are re restricting your glucose. Or some of the cells are old already and this pushes them over the edge, the five days you're going through. So white blood cell count, um, this I, I probably should have compared to when I wasn't doing the fast mimicking diet, but I did the first round and uh, obviously I went down, my white blood cell count went down and then I didn't do a pre-second round, but I did just the second round and it still stayed down. So your white blood cell, pounds, red blood cell count is supposed to be higher than that. But uh, because I'm an intermittent faster, I assume my WBC count's low, but it really ju jumped down a little bit. So that's a little bit of a cool response during the six, on the sixth day. Uh, this is TSH. These are part of the thyroid function panels that I do for my patients. And TSH, not bad. This TSH, pretty decent. I, again, because I don't have thyroid problem, uh, I did the marker anyway, and I'll show you why, which is really cool in about three slides, but the thyroids are functioning fine, and your thyroid will function fine, but when, uh, and this is what uh, I'm hypothesizing, uh, when you go through starvation, the thyroid will still work, however, the thyroid, in fact, the thyroid never stops working unless you have Hashimoto's and it destroys itself. Uh, what the thyroid will do, because the thyroid makes T4, that's the uh, hormone that comes out of the thyroid. Uh, hopefully you can see this, but uh, one month ago, 1.1, 1 .1, uh, after the first round of uh, whole food FMD, 1.3, and then this time after the Prolon FMD, 1.6, which is a little unusual. So you can see that there was accumulation of free T4, or non-active thyroid hormone. Uh, I don't know how to interpret that, but the next two slides will be pretty cool. Uh, this is free T3. T4, that's the hormone that comes out of this thyroid. It gets converted when it gets the cells and the body to T3. T3 is the most active thyroid hormone. So the amount of T3, eh, it's okay, standard. This is cool. The amount of reverse T3. Reverse T3 is useless. And uh, so hopefully you'll have a normal TSH, like I did, a pretty decent T4, a pretty decent to high T3, and a very low T reverse T3. Reverse T3 is useless. So what you'll find here is my reverse T3 after the first round of FMD, whole food, 30. I like to see my patients with a reverse T3 less than 20. I think 20, getting to 20 usually means either you don't have enough cofactors to convert your T4 to T3, or something is happening in the body that it's making useless uh, T3, which is reverse T3. 30 is outrageous, and, and that I can only assume, this is my hypothesis, that when the body is going through its uh, fasting and its starvation, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to take five days of fasting mimicking diet and induce a water fasting kind of starvation picture to the body. And I think that's enough. I mean, going to 750 calories a day, by numbers, I didn't think about it, but that's not that much. In fact, um, there's something called the HCG diet that was popular about five years ago. You would take a, a, a hormone injected into you to tolerate dropping your daily calories to about 800. And that was outrageous. Uh, but uh, people did that uh, through some longevity clinics, I guess, and they got away with excessive weight loss because they were sustaining just 800 calories a day, which is, again, outrageous. But without doing that, without going to a longevity clinic, without getting an injection, you can do it with five days of this program. So I, again, in summary, sorry for the long-winded uh, answer, but... I think that the thyroid and its cells are going through hibernation. That's why the thyroid and the periphery, thyroid's making its hormones, 
but the periphery is changing. It's not uh, producing any thyroid, any, or it's not converting T4 to T3, the active, useful T. It's turning it, to, turn, it's turning it off. That's why your reverse T, my reverse T3 was high. That was after the whole food approach. So what would be cool, and I'll do it with my third round, is I'll get a before and after, and then I'll do one like three months after, and I'll see if the reverse T3 goes down. I've had one, a uh, couple uh, thyroids from a long time ago. I never had a reverse T3 this high. So this is with the whole food FMD approach. This is with the Prolon approach at 44, reverse T3. That means my cells, by the fifth, by the sixth day, my cells are just accumulating this useless T3, reverse T3, in out, outrageous amounts. That's two times normal. That's crazy. So, again, if you go back to the thyroid function, it looked okay. So, the thyroid was still cooking, but the body was not allowing the conversion to active T3, it was going into hibernation. That's crazy. So this is pretty good with a whole food approach. So I think the whole food approach still works, but the prolon kicked my ass and it shows. So that's the thyroid function. Uh, the other cool thing with uh, going through the FMD is that you will, uh, during the five days of relative starvation, uh, the signals are sent to the body to start quieting down, get rid of all or destroy all the senescent and precancer cells and just survive, shrink the liver, shrink the muscles, shrink the kidneys. It does that in order to survive, just like a yeast cell or a mouse uh, that's going through starvation. So my insulin levels, and when you are uh, uh, taking in too much glucose or your body's insulin resistant, that's like a prediabetes, you'll have insulin levels, at least I look for to find or tag that diagnosis, I look for insulin levels like 10 to 12 to 15. I have patients that are really pre-diabetics and they're like in their 20s. And that either means that you are having too much of a carbohydrate dinner from the night before, or your, your body's expecting a heavy hit of carbohydrates in the morning, which is not good. You shouldn't be insulin resistant. This is super sensitive. So my body went through starvation. I had, uh, before I did the first round of whole food FMD, I was a two, that's pretty low. That's a good insulin response in the morning. I usually get it at 7 a.m. Uh, after I did the whole food FMD, it was a two, so it didn't really move. Now, when I did the, the Prolon box FMD, it, went, it didn't even measure, it's less than one. That's pretty decent. That means my body was used to not getting any insulin. And I, I've been a vegetarian, pescatarian, I should say, for about three years. Been a vegan since November 2018. Been a vegan intermittent faster since about January, February of 2019, and I didn't really feel anything until I did this FMD thing. So, and I only did it for Pat, and I, I didn't really think anything of it. I thought, okay, it's novelty to uh, help with cancer boosting, maybe lose a little bit of visceral fat, but I, I can't. Uh, I, I am very, very impressed with this effect. And last but not least, this is beta hydroxybutyrate. So when you go through starvation and your cells start to get, they don't have glucose anymore, they're gonna search for other fuel sources. Usually it's gonna be fats. So um, if you are fat adapted, uh, like you practice nutritional ketosis, or like I did, I take, uh, I, before the, the week before doing the FMD, both times, whole food and then pro box, I took, um, ketone salts, and I have a, I'll put a link down below, I took ketone salts to induce a little bit of, uh, while I was on my vegan intermittent fast usual diet, I took some ketone salts to see if I can nudge myself into ketosis, just so I wouldn't have such a tough first day. So um, when I did it a month ago, I wasn't really in ketosis. I mean, point three is not bad. Uh, after the whole food uh, FMD, uh, 1.3 is pretty decent for uh, nutritional ketosis. After I did the Prolon box, 4.4 is outstanding. If you're if you're practicing uh, nutritional ketosis, fat adapted, that's pretty decent. And obviously, the difference between the two, whole food versus Prolon, Prolon again, it kicked my ass, but it was worth it because my body is, is now fat adapted, and it definitely does not sense on the sixth day, it did not sense uh, any glucose around, so I was burning fat. Now, 
my uh, body fat composition by DEXA scan, I, pr I probably should have put a picture, I forgot that. My body fat composition is like 13. I, that's through a DEXA scan in Rockford. That's probably the most accurate. Uh, bod pod is another way to measure fat and muscle. Calipers aren't great. Uh, impedance is okay, but I think DEXA scanning gives a, uh, almost like a, a live action uh, discussion or a, a presentation that this is your fat, this is your muscle, this is how it looks. So I'm excited to see after my third cycle what my repeat DEXA scan will show as far as uh, visceral fat. So I am definitely fat adapted and I think the prolon pushed me over. Now whether it's you know, this is only an N of one. I like self-experimenting. Whether it's because I'm now daisy chaining, hitting my second round of FMD, I don't know, but this is still information that you can use to help you decide if you're on the fence about trying this. It's tough, but it's done. I'm on my, again, I'm, I, I'm still kind of refeeding and I'm, I'm now back to working out. I made the mistake of working out during the first round and I think that uh, Longo is uh, always pushing the envelope with trying to keep the starvation signal going during the five days. So if you interrupt that starvation signal with exercise, you might uh, postpone the response. If you interrupt the starvation signal with protein and or sugar, you might interrupt the response because on the refeed day, you want the stem cells to turn on. And then on a refeed from day six to day 16, so 10 days after you finish, the FMD, I think it's very important to refeed properly. I th you know, the, the first thing I was thinking about on the sixth day was I'm having a beer and I'm gonna just bug out with it. But uh, the, the one thing I will tell you a second round now, I haven't had the urge to really go binge anymore as far as food or alcohol. So I think there is, and he stated that too, and other uh, practitioners have stated that as well. When you go through the FMD, after having triggered stem cell or just maybe just getting through five days of hell, uh, your desires are still on focus. I, my, my problem solving skills, my time in the clinic with all this computer system snafu issue, I'm a little tolerant, a little more tolerant to it. My, um, my sleep is better. Uh, one thing I wanted to tell you, and that's why I like the the study that he is going to release hopefully from Verona about athletes, my muscle responsiveness is out the window. So this is a picture I did on Facebook of a, um, I do exercises on Facebook for my Facebook followers tw two times a week. And I, this is a crow pose that I was showing how to do. If you look, and I didn't touch up these, uh, the, this picture, but if you look, I have striations on my shoulders. These, this is, uh, bodybuilding. So I'm a bodybuilder from 1982. And back in 82, I was poor. And uh, I think I ate tuna fish cans because I was living in Wildwood, New Jersey uh, with uh, two bouncers and a bartender. And uh, we didn't have much money. So we just spent it on alcohol. And when I was getting into bodybuilding with um, Attila's Gym in Wildwood, 1982, uh, I was naturally cut. So I just had to put on mass. Uh, that's 1982. I haven't been able to get striations like that since 82. I have them again. And this is after one round of the whole food uh, FMD. That, I think, I, I failed to measure testosterone. I didn't think it was important as a marker, but here's the thing. If you are healthy, uh, 32, say, uh, athletic, a good body mass index, uh, no medical problems. If you do the FMD, you probably haven't noticed too much as far as your blood tests. You might notice uh, beta hydroxybutyrate, fasting insulin, maybe a CBC response, maybe that thyroid thing. But the other markers that I uh, usually do, and these are the other markers down here, BHB, CBC, insulin, IGF-1, IGF-1, binding protein, CRP, lipid, glucose, TSH, free T3, free T4, reverse T3. Those are things that are important. Hopefully you can see this on um, the, the video. But um, if you are healthy, you won't notice changes. But sub subjectively, I've noticed change. So now I did chop off uh, a lot of weight. I should say fat. I didn't lose lean muscle mass, which is awesome. And I got cut. So I, I haven't done anything else different with my exercises. 
I haven't done anything else different with uh, my supplements, haven't done anything else different with my sleep. I'm still, as I mentioned before, a vegan intermittent faster from a couple months ago. This FMD thing spurred on a change. And there's something uh, called um, myosatellite cells, which are the uh, stem cells of the muscle. When you have myosatellite cells that are turned on, they repair and fix and make muscle respond better, in my opinion. I'm waiting to see what Longo's uh, information comes out with the, the FMD for athletes, but I will tell you, as a, um, a self-experimenter, I'm doing the same exercises and I'm having muscle response to this like I've never had since my uh, teens and 20s. So I blame the uh, response to this of my musculature to the stem cell theory that during the five days you uh, you destroy useless cells, you turn on stem cells, and then during the refeed process, they blossom and you rejuvenate. So the, uh, the thing with muscle is that myosatellites, myosatellite cells are the muscle stem cells. So they've been differentiated already, but they go on to provide um, either uh, muscle repair or provide improvement in muscle blood flow. So I think that they, they're there to support muscle growth. And again, I felt the difference. Uh, uh, so with the studies that are coming out from Verona, we'll see if other athletes have also, younger probably, have also felt the difference. Now I'm 56, I'm gonna be 57 this year. So I've always been lean, uh, skinny, whatever you want to call it, but now I'm lean, skinny, and I'm developing muscle mass that I technically shouldn't be developing at this age. So I, I, don't, I don't care. I think that longevity proves itself. If you have, I always want my patients with um, uh, osteoporosis or um, uh, aging and uh, say uh, muscle responsiveness is poor and that's that uh, anabolic resistance I was talking about. I want my patients to develop muscle strength and keep up with resistance or weight training from 30, 40, and 50 and going forward. Even if you're 70, I think it's still possible. It might be a little tough but this might be a key to stimulating and starting that muscle fire or muscle building again. So um, again, don't do it yourself. Try to, if you're gonna do the box, great. If you're gonna do your whole food approach, great. But uh, also invest in exercise. Now, when would I start exercising? I started exercising easily on the sixth to the 16th day. I've already, uh, now I'm, I'm a very weathered athlete, so I know what to do. I can slowly ramp up. I, I posted on Facebook that I was exercising a little bit on the fourth and fifth days, uh, but I'm gonna try to change that with my third round and see what happens if I can maintain a no exercise. And I miss exercise when I'm not around the gym or at home or here in my office. Uh, I'm gonna try to do that and hopefully not stir up that cell response that we're trying to get during the first five days. So we'll see, I'll post again in the near future, but um, if you're going to try to refeed properly, try to make it mostly whole food and has to be plant-based. I believe that Longo does not mind because of his, he's got pillars of uh, uh, evidence. And one of the things that he really uh, uses for support is centenarian studies and uh, he has a good point because in most, uh, we follow most people to 100 years of age in the world, the blue zones, uh, not too many of them are pure fat, meaning ketotic, uh, ketos, uh, nutritional ketosis. So it's hard to compare. I think ketosis is nice. I, it does help my patients. At least it shifts uh, them from uh, out of control diabetes to in control diabetes. To a different category and maybe from in control diabetes to normal again again a different category but uh, again ketosis for the long run we'll have to see I don't have a problem with it um, if you're on medicines you, you have to ask your doctor uh, but once you switch the categories from disease to non-disease you might want to back off a little bit and then go back to what the blue zones what the oldest cultures in on earth have, have eaten that's usually more of a carbohydrate little bit uh, fat and very little protein as far as the food choices. And check out the Blue Zones with Dan Buettner. But I've, seen, I've heard Walt Longo talk about 45, 45, 10, meaning fat 45%, uh, uh, carbohydrates 45% and protein 10%, or 60, 30, 10, 60% carbs, 30% fat, and 10% protein. 
which as I said before, I have a problem with protein being so low because I like uh, protein to be available, especially if I'm pushing the envelope with exercise. Um, uh, the old uh, suggestion is 0.8 uh, grams per kilo. I, that's, I think that's low. Uh, and I've seen information out of Canada, McMaster University and Stewart uh, saying you can push 1.2 grams per kilo and higher in some cases with athletes. So athletes are a different uh, animal though. They're not average humans. So the question would be if you push that much protein to, for a cause, which would be muscle development, um, will it, it'll obviously work for muscle, but will it get you in the long run? And we'll have to see. Long, long-term studies would be important. But if it, if it does, you'll see athletes dying. But I don't think you see athletes dying. So I think there's a, a, a risk and benefit ratio that has to be evaluated. However, if you're going to do the strict thing and you have a disease process until you get to a different category of disease, uh, do that during your uh, 6th to 16th day. And then uh, if you do have disease, the suggestion is at least three rounds of FMD. Now, you can actually do FMD every single month if you wanted to, if you're that diseased. If you're healthy, 20s to 30s, your athlete, BMI is good. And a BMI for me, that's good. It should be 23 or below. Uh, waist to hip ratio, good. Uh, no diseases, no medical problems, cleared by your doctor. You can probably do it twice a year. I think it's still important for its preventative issues. If you have cancer, once a month. If you have diabetes, once a month. Uh, as, as far as doing the whole food approach, there's a lot of people that do it because the box is expensive. I don't think Longo wants that because when you start doing your own calculation, just like me, I'm very good with nutrition, but I probably under calculated or over calculated the calories. And uh, there's other, as I put here, Prolon is expensive, but there are other ingredients in the Prolon box that might give you this entourage effect. So not only do you have lower calories and very succinct uh, uh, macronutrients, but uh, like the glycerin involved, that might also have a, uh, 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 an, an effect with rejuvenation too, uh, or maybe satiety. But uh, I think if you, if you don't want to fuss and you want to invest, do the Prolon. I'll try to get um, El Nutra to give me a, a, a discount and maybe I can put them on my website. Herbal 411. I have to talk to a representative, so if, if I can get it, uh, any of my followers on YouTube or my patients can have it. Um, just as long as you comment uh, uh, the, the positives, if you don't mind. I'd like to accumulate some data with my patient population to see if this is really just as good as a medicine or just as good as a supplement, which it seems to be. Reprogram the body to fix itself and it should fix itself. So. Uh, uh, bottom line is that I think that this is a, a, a great uh, adjunct to living healthy. If you don't know what, if you're still trying to find your nutritional practice, cool. But throwing this in might get you to find it even faster. Um, so hopefully this gives you a little bit of an idea. Uh, I know it's a long tutorial, but I will be doing an addendum to this in about a month and then three months to let you know how I've uh, uh, gone through with my uh, experience. Uh, if you have any uh, comments down below, please put them there on your experience with FMD and how a disease has changed with you. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next tutorial.